Uh, Mr. Genuis, uh, you have the floor for five minutes. Thank you, Chair. I'm going to follow up on the Globe and Mail story about the uh, locally engaged staff at the Canadian Embassy. Uh, Minister, the source for the Globe story is three separate Canadian diplomats with direct knowledge of these events. Now, you've offered um, a very qualified denial of the story. You said that you, you were not aware of kill lists that specifically named Canadians. But that was not the question, and that was not the Globe and Mail story. Their story was that Canadian embassy staff were likely on lists, and that the Five Eyes briefed Canadian officials that Ukrainians who worked for Western embassies were likely on the list, and further, that the Canadian embassy made a decision not to pass that information along. So, Minister, to be very clear, is the Globe and Mail story, in your view, correct or not? Well, what I can tell you is that I didn't have that information. The My team didn't have that information. You heard the deputy that the department didn't have that information. So we need Sorry, to get to the bottom of this. Can you clarify what do you mean by the department didn't have that information? We do you had mean no, no, information. no employee of the Canadian government we had, had this information? No, Who's we, though? We, so it's... My myself, my political staff, and Global Affairs Canada, according to what the deputy has just mentioned, we had no information regarding the fact that there was lists specifically targeted Canadian diplomats and locally engaged staff in Kiev. But that is, is not the question. The, the but, Globe and Mail story said that Five Eyes gave a brief to the Canadian Embassy that it was likely that... West, that Ukrainian nationals who were locally engaged staff working at, at Western embassies were likely on the list. Can you please just give us a clear answer? In what your I can, view, Garnet, is the Globe and Mail story true or false? tell you what I can tell you is that is we the Globe knew, and, Mail and story this true is or false, public, yes or no? What I can tell you is that indeed, and, and the Americans made that intelligence public, uh, there were some lists specifically targeting Russia. Uh, Ukrainian people in Ukraine. And of course, we were preoccupied with these targeting. Now, in the context of having any information regarding Canadians being on these lists, Canadian diplomats, locally engaged staff, we had no information regarding this. And so that is why it's really important yeah. that Canadians be clear uh, on that because of course, it is about the government of Canada's responsibility towards not only the people that work okay. for us, but people also that are serving th us th th while thank we you, are Minister. in Ukraine. Thank you, Minister. I asked a clear question. You didn't provide and I, an answer. No, I we provide have, a very clear Minister, answer. Minister, I have the floor. We had, we had three diplomats uh, speaking to the Globe and Mail, potentially at some risk to their own careers. Well, I would out. be, I would be very finish, interested Minister, in having that Minister, information. Uh, yeah, I'm sure because you'd like I think it's very important that we get to the, to the bottom of this story. And, uh, Minister, because uh, you can I've be sure, you, uh, Garnet, that this Sarah, is something that I take, Minister, I take very seriously. It's my time. This is life or death situation. And as a minister, I as a human being, I'm very very concerned briefing, to minister, make sure and you won't that we tell us the whether right you have thing. that information. And so, and Garnet, I'm sorry. Take over the time, Minister. No, I'm not trying to take over the time. I'm presenting minister, you. You have what not is answered the, the question. Moral decision, it was a clear the right moral question. Decision, the, it was a clear question I asked you, which was whether or not the Globe and Mail story is correct according to your information. You chose not to answer it, and I think according most Canadians to my, will conclude according that to my that information, I don't agree with the facts that are stated. Thank you. Monsieur le Président, rappel au règlement. Yes, Mr. Bergeron, you have the floor for oui, point of order. Et je, je, ça me répugne de devoir interrompre mon collègue, mais je croyais que cette séance devait porter principalement sur euh, euh, le permis euh, permettant le transfert des turbines vers, vers l'Allemagne. Euh, je sais que euh, la question de la pertinence euh, est interprété assez largement et, et je pense que jusqu'à présent ce fut le cas, mais euh, j'aimerais peut-être qu'on revienne euh, au cœur du sujet, Monsieur le Président. C'est un très bon point, Monsieur Bergeron. Monsieur le Président, j'ai ma main sur un point de ordre aussi. Est-ce que c'est sur le même point de ordre? C'est, oui. Oui, s'il vous plaît, Monsieur le Président. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I appreciate your comment, Mr. Bergeron, but I, I do just wanted to highlight that the the members of the government had brought this this issue up during their questions already. So I think it is it is fair. I would like to see obviously a, a little bit more decorum within our committee where we are not speaking over each other. Um, so if, if that could be could be managed, Mr. Chair, I think that would be great. But I do think it is reasonable for us to, for us to ask these questions. They are they are they are relevant and they are timely because, of course, the, the government has had an opportunity to ask those questions already. Thank you. Um, as chair, of course, I would like people to stay on topic, although historically there's been a fairly wide latitude when it comes to these types of things. And I do recall at the beginning of Minister Jolie's statement, she said that we're here to discuss Pertin's war of choice. So I'm presuming uh, other topics uh, related to um, the uh, invasion, the brutal invasion by Russia are in order. Uh, Mr. Genuis, I have you uh, you can have the floor. I have you uh, with one more minute left. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would like to provide a notice of motion to the committee that the committee requests that all documents in the possession of the government related to the assessed risk to non-Canadians employed at the Canadian diplomatic missions in Ukraine at any time in the last 18 months be provided to the committee within 30 days of the adoption of this motion. That's a notice of motion. I'm not moving it. Uh, additionally, uh, in, just in the time I have left, I've been struck by all this talk about the allies, the alliance being united, about how we need to have the alliance um, united. Um, Minister Jolie, very directly, is Ukraine an ally of Canada, in your view? Of course. So the alliance is divided? No. So you, Ukraine is taking a, a very directly and sharply a different position from Canada. Clearly the alliance is divided uh, if Ukraine is part of the alliance. Is that you not... No, I don't think that the alliance is divided. I think we have to be steadfast in unity. Sometime... Uh, is Ukraine part of the alliance, Minister? Do you want me, Garnet, to answer your questions, or do you want to cuff me off at, every time, every single is, time? Minister, is Ukraine part of the alliance? I'm asking you your that's question. question. That's, okay, that's my question. That's my question, Minister. Is Ukraine part of the alliance? Ukraine is an ally, and we are all standing with Ukraine. And our goal oh. is to continue to support them, but now maybe we'll be able to get an answer from you, because James didn't answer beforehand. Is it the position of the Conservative Party of Canada that the turbine should not have been sent back to Germany. Thank you, uh, Minister. Uh, I, I would Sobera. love to answer that. I, your uh, round is up, oh. unfortunately, Mr. Janus. Um,